just get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry, a year to keep your eyes on heaven, day 60 of the year 2011. Frutal pursuits. Brethren, I suggest you write the chapter and verses down as we go through them so that you can go back and study them at your own leisure, the whole context, not only the little bit that we give you. You can use the pause button down here in the corner to start and stop this video study as we go along so that you'll be able to read right along with us. Okay, let's get right on over to Frugal Pursuits. And to do that, we'll go to Matthew chapter 16, verses 26 through 27. Matthew's chapter 16 and verse 26 reads, How do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but lose your own soul in the process? Nowhere is the problem of fruitful pursuits demonstrated more succinctly than in the story of the Roman Empire Tamerlane. According to legend, the infamous king asked to be entombed, sitting upright in his throne. He asked that the crown be placed on his head, and the scepter in his hand, and that his royal cape be draped over his shoulders. He won an open Bible placed on his lap. He died in A.D. 814. Nearly 200 years later, the emperor, Othio, wondered if his predecessor's wishes were carried out, so he sent a team of men to open the tomb and find out. He found the body exactly as Charmelin had requested. He was sitting upright in full dress with a book opened on his lap. The book was a Bible, just as Charmelin had commanded. But upon closer inspection, he noticed that the servant who buried him had taken the liberty of placing one of the empire's hands on the book, extending his index finger, finger toward the particular passage. It was Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? It's in the NIV. In Psalms chapter 49, verses 16 through 17, we read, Do not be dismayed when the wicked grow rich and their homes become ever more splendid, for when they die, they carry nothing with them. Their wealth will not follow them into the grave. Like the king, we all find ourselves struggling with an attachment to things of this world. Even those who long for heaven and eagerly await the coming of Jesus find it difficult to let go of the temporal treasures on earth. It is not that we do not trust God. We just find it difficult to look past the moment. Wall Street promises innocent gratification, while Jesus tells us to wait for it. Madison Avenue says it can quench our thirst today, while Jesus beckons us to put our faith in the stream of living water. See John chapter 4 and verse 10. We know his promises are true, but our fleshly desires are often so insistent. Jesus says, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God. John chapter 4 and verse 34. Jesus understands our desire for worldly indulgences and our struggles to overcome them. His life on earth is a pattern for us to follow. The strength we need to forsake fruitful pursuits is different from heavenly ones can be found. Though the words and action of the Savior, it is possible to overcome our drive for
for fortune and fame and glory. We begin by letting the life of Jesus become the template for our own. What does it mean to let our nourishment be the will of God? How does that change our perspective of earthly indulgences? I'm having trouble with that word. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 reads, He will come to do God's will. In Matthew chapter 21 and verse 9 we read, He will come in the name of the Lord. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. And I pray, Father, brothers, that you're not doing that. You're not making void the word of God. By making the void the word of God, you will find yourself going in the Kahina fire. I don't say that. Your own Bible says that. Brethren, follow the narrow path. Talk to the Father who is up in heaven there waiting for your call, waiting for you to call him into your body. But he can't do that if you are purposely breaking the will of God and breaking his commandments. That's all of them. You can't just pick the ones you want. You have to follow them all. And then he, the Father, will hear you and come within you right here on earth. Where after the millennium, he tends to be on here, on earth with you. Brethren, as I mentioned many times, you want to follow that narrow path to the kingdom, to eternal salvation with the Father and His Son. Be down on your knees and repent. Repent for not following.